trying. The battle is not your battle, but the battle is the Lord's battle. This is Donna Schambach, and I want to welcome you to today's Power Connection. If you were with us last week, you heard part one of Brother Schambach's classic sermon, When You Wonder Why, Have You Ever Been There? Listen, I want you to tune in today. I know you're going to be excited. I believe whether you're listening by podcast or you're watching on YouTube, I believe you're going to be coming out of your seat with praise, and you're going to be encouraged. Let's go now to R.W. Schambach, When You Wonder Why. I've been reading from this book of Exodus. Now, I won't get through with this, but please invite me back so I can finish it. I'm speaking from the book of Exodus, And I'm reading from chapter 14, just one phrase, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn. Now you talk about a setup. And this is exactly what it is. It's a setup. God is using Moses to get his people out of bondage. sent miracle after miracle after miracle, and he hardened the heart of Pharaoh, that after he left him go, he changed his mind and said, I'm not going to let him go. And I recognize this when I set people free. The first thing the devil says, I ain't going to let him go. I said, I didn't come here in my own name. I come here in the name of Jesus. And when you use that name in full assurance of faith, the devil reeks like a coward and he has to go because one of you can chase a thousand and two of you can put 10,000 to flight. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Here they find themselves in a situation Pharaoh changed his mind. And you know why Pharaoh changed his mind? God did it. God made him change his mind. I told you God's working against us. Why? They could have gone an easier way to the promised land. But instead, God positions them in a situation where mountains are on one side, mountains on the other side, the Red Sea in front of them, and the devil behind them. There ain't no way out. They're in a trap. Have you ever felt like you're in a trap? You're in the will of God. God's gonna show you it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You said, well, I've tried everything and it just don't work. Stop trying. The battle is not your battle, but the battle is the Lord's battle. Hallelujah. Now God had a man that he could get his ear, Moses. He said, turn him around. Tell them to turn here and move them down by that Red Sea. Now they're in the trap. While they're getting a little rest, they hear the hoofbeats and the chariot wheels. And you know the devil's closing in on you. You just got the pink slip. You got your bank statement, balance, double zero. (laughs) Have you ever been there? (laughs) Why? 
Wasn't it wonderful to hear the testimony of the lady who got a, uh, what was it, an $8,000 raise? Do they need any more help down there? <laughs> That's a raise. Look what the Lord has done. They were in a situation, though, where they were in the, the prongs of poverty. But God delivered them and set them free. So if you're in that mess right now, you may got a bad report from a doctor. Don't lay down and mope about it and say, well, I've been expecting this. That lying devil. God allowed you to go through this thing so he can show you his power. The medical profession does everything they can. God says, now let me show you what I will do. And one touch from the nail-scarred hand of Calvary. And he will heal your body. Hallelujah. Why? Now it's a deliberate setup. He positions his kids. Oh, I mean his children. But I'm bringing it down where you can understand it. And then he prepares the need. And he already has the outcome plan. He already knows how it's going to come out. You're the only one left in the dark. Now why does God have to do this to me? We've all been there. How's he going to do it? He has it already planned out. While he has them in the trap, he said, I'm going to move upon Pharaoh and I'll get glory out of him and I'll make him run after him. And when the devil's on your trail, you say, why? Two thousand years ago, Jesus destroyed the devil. Now, in his earthly ministry, he destroyed his works. But when he died, and when he was buried, and when he arose again, he destroyed him. He who had the power of death. Jesus destroyed him. He's already been rendered powerless and helpless. And it's up to you and me to keep the devil where he belongs because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 He positions his kids. He prepares the need. He plans the outcome. And then he proceeds with the plan, and he carries it out. That's all under a deliberate setup. And then there's a destructive spirit that gets a hold of them. Have you ever been there? We all have. A destructive spirit. Look at verse 10. When Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. There's that spirit called fear. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? We've all been there. They panicked. Now they're blaming God. First of all, they're blaming the pastor. How would you like to pastor this mess that just came out of Egypt? Several million people. Here God brings them out and is getting ready to move them into the promised land. 
and he's taking them around another way. He takes them through a wilderness to get to the promised land. But he has everything planned. They're going to know what it means to be harnessed, to be disciplined. I'll never forget when I joined the Navy, I was 17 years of age, and I, I was in boot camp. That's what they called the military training during World War II, and I was in boot camp, and they tell you when to get up, tell you when to run, tell you when to eat, tell you when to go to bed. And they have some hard-nosed guy over you <laughs> telling you, we own you now. Your mama's not here. We bought you for $50 a month. That's all they paid us. And they drilled us. Run, run, run. Where are we going? Nowhere. Just run. <laughs> Just going around in circles. You did Former military men, you know what I'm talking about. They just run. Where are we headed for? Nowhere. Run. <laughs> Why am I running? Because I'm telling you to, dummy. Run. <laughs> Amen. I'm getting a shout over here. <laughs> but what they were doing was disciplining us when we get out on the front line. God's looking for somebody that will learn how to take orders. Are you listening to me? He wants somebody that will just say, yes, Lord. You don't have to try to reason it out. You don't have to understand it. God said, fear not. Now here Moses and I'd love to read this in this 14th chapter. Moses said unto the people, Fear not! Stand still! See the salvation of the Lord which he'll show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? What are you tormenting me for? Speak unto the children of Israel and tell them to go forward. Forward? That's the sea, Lord. I told you he does things the hard way. He puts you in a predicament. You don't know what to do. Pharaoh's on your trail, mountains on either side of you, and here the Red Sea is overflowing its banks. Moses, you're wasting time. Tell the children to go forward. <laughs> Lord, the sea. <laughs> See, we try to reason things out. God said, Moses, what is that in your hand? It's the rod, Lord. Use it. I can't hold three million people. Now, maybe two of us could float over on it, but... <laughs> Listen to me, believer. You may find yourself in a position right now, and there's no way out. But you are a prime target for a miracle. You say, how's it going to work? God put something in your hand. I don't know, Rob. You've got the name of Jesus. You've got to learn how to use it. Moses, will you use the rod? How? Stretch it out. Yes, Lord. Now what? You may even look like an idiot stretching a rod out over a sea until it starts to back up. 
on either side. And God blew a hole in that Red Sea about two miles long. You put that in a computer and find out how many, how many people were there, how many of God's children, and they traveled all night long to get across and how long it took. It wasn't just a little old path like Cecil, Bill, Cecil B. DeMille made in that Ten Commandments picture. But when God does something, he does it on a big scale. And he blew a hole in that Red Sea and said, now, move on out. I can picture Moses saying, all right, Lord. <laughs> you know, God makes it look so easy. And here we are sweating it out, biting our nails up to the wrist. <laughs> what am I going to do? You see the family broken up. You lost your job. You ain't got no money in the bank. Y2K is coming. What am I going to do? <laughs> People are always asking me, what are you going to do when Y2K gets here? I said, it might not get here. <laughs> we may get out of here before it gets here. <laughs> Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I believe it with all of my heart. I was just saying it to somebody in the other room. All of my sensors tell me Jesus is on his way back. Are you ready? Have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Are you living for him? Maybe you've been living in a backslidden state. It's time to make ready. My dad always used to say, it's make ready time. We don't need to play church. We don't need to fool around. We need to be in right standing with God. I want to pray for you today. And maybe you do know the Lord, but you have a whole host of family members that are living in a backslidden condition. You're concerned about their spiritual welfare. Why don't we pray for them today as well? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this one who's coming to their senses. They realize they've been a prodigal. They've wasted their life, Lord, on prodigal living. But they're saying, it's time for me to come home to the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, would you be merciful to me, a sinner? Would you clean me up? Would you come and live in my heart and live in daily fellowship with me. I sense that something is about to happen in this world, and I want to be ready when you call our name. I want to be ready, Lord, when you come to meet us in the clouds. And Father, for every one of us who are serving you and are looking and loving your appearing, Lord, we're concerned about family members who may not be in right standing with you. We ask you by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would cloak them and mantle them with a spirit of conviction. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to them in their dreams, that you'd make them hungry for the things of God, that they know their life can be better, Lord, by serving you. Let there come a time of revelation to their spirit, Lord. We call them back to their rightful place in your house in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that whatever has been causing us worry, Lord, causing us to wonder why, we thank you, God, that you are the God of turnaround, that even before we've called, you have answered, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that the resolution is on its way. You are the way maker. You are the problem solver. You are the one, Lord, that takes our trouble and turns it into triumph. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. We have not been able to put this entire message in just two parts. So if you would like to get the audio portion of this message in its entirety on a USB. Would you let us know? We'll make it available to you. Just look at the information there on the screen and you can email us or 
you can send a check and we'll be happy to get that to you. Make sure when you're on the website that you look for an opportunity to partner with us. We had so many places we're going this year to tell people about Jesus and we need partners to help send us. So just go to shambach.org or donaglobal.com and you can be a part of what we're doing around the globe. And please, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, would you do that and share it with a friend? Make sure you make a comment or like us. It helps us to go up in the ratings. God bless you. I'm Donna Shambach, and I'm going to say it as my dad used to say it. Remember, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. Hey, I'm Quest Gatlin, Director of Operations here at Shambach Ministries, and I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a thing. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And for more information about upcoming events, Shambach School of Ministry, and how you can be a part of our worldwide outreach, visit us at shambach.org or donaglobal.com. We'll see you next time on Power Connection.